because Priscilla and Margaret never make their beds or help with the dishes. That's how come. But it's only a slumber party. They slumber real good, Uncle Charlie. Yeah, well, check with your folks. But I'm telling you right now, I ain't recommending. The doorbell, Uncle Charlie. I heard it. I heard it. And keep your fingers out of the salad. Okay. I'll get it. You go relax or something. Uh, hi. Hey, you ain't peddling little kids, are you? I'm Jill Barsnick. My husband is a friend of Robbie Douglas's. Robbie? Oh, come on in. Hey, Katie. Oh, I didn't know he was there. Uh, this is Jewel. Uh, well, you heard her name. It's nice meeting you. Uh, come in, please. Yeah. Hi, Pumpkin. <laughs> Well, I'm certainly glad you came in, because I want to hear all about Robbie. Yeah? I oh, sure do. Oh, what a big boy. Ooh. Hey, what's your name? Well, this is Jason. Say hello, honey. Uh, <laughs> hi, Jason. Hey, you know, he's a spitting image of his dad. Oh, do you know Carl? No. Uh, well, then how do you know Jason looks like him? <laughs> because he don't look like you. <laughs> Funny. You say your, your husband is a friend of Robbie's? Yes, they're working together on those bridges in Peru. Together? I mean, they're actually on the same crew? Carl works for your husband. He's the junior engineer, and your husband is the senior engineer. Oh, how wonderful. How can he be senior anything? He's just a punk kid. Hey, have you heard from your husband? How's Robbie? Well, he was fine as of five weeks ago. Oh, you mean you're not getting any letters either? <laughs> well, what do you girls expect? A mailbox on every palm tree in the jungle? <laughs> Uncle Charlie, uh, do you think you could find a cookie for Jason out in the kitchen? Hey, uh... Would you like a cookie? Yeah. Are you trying to unload me? What? No. Well, I, I would like to talk to Jewel for a minute, please. Oh, I see. Well, hey, come on, little fella. They want to unload us. You're talking too much. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Charlie. Yeah, I'll give him a cookie. <laughs> Thanks. There is something I'd like to talk to you about. Hi, I'm Judy Douglas. Oh, honey, this is Mrs. Marsnick. Hello. Uh, you said there was something you wanted to talk to me about. Holy oh, little boy lady. Honey, you're interrupting. Rob's okay, isn't he? Well, as I say, he was fine five weeks ago. <laughs> My boys. Carl said you had three. Listen, would you like a, a dinner at my apartment? Hey, sure. fellas, look what I got here. <laughs> look at it. Hey, we can play too, can't we? Huh? Well, we certainly what? can't talk here. I would love to have dinner at your apartment. <laughs> what time? Oh, All right, now. <laughs> you know, I have three tobacco pouches, and somehow they all seem to end up in our bedroom. You have nothing to do with that. No. Go to your sleep? Well, she's still campaigning for that slumber party. Uh, Honey, uh, did Katie uh, tell you why she's having dinner with that girl? Well, she just said they had a lot to talk over about their remote husbands. Mm. Must be pretty rugged. That's not the word for it. Carl's been gone almost two years. Two years? He's never even seen Jason. But in, in all this time... Couldn't he have met you in Lima for a few days? Has Robbie done that? Well, not lately. That's remote. Even if you got as far as Lima, there are still hundreds of miles of practically uncharted grounds to cover, and it's much too dangerous for a woman. Recognize those lyrics? Everybody's making good money. Oh, yes. He even manages to write a letter once in a while. Oh, have you received the last yet? Yes. The Indian ladies make them. Apparently, every American who works down there thinks that a lace mantilla takes care of the months of waiting. I'll help you with the dishes. <clears throat> what does Carl say about Rob? Well, he says he's fine. Robbie is the youngest senior engineer they've ever had down there. And your husband is terrific under adversity. Yeah, he does sort of have this bulldog thing about him. 
Carl says that um, Robbie loves a challenge, that the harder the job is, the better he likes it. He slogs through the jungle like a water buffalo, and that's the exact quote. Well, I'd, I'd hate it if he were unhappy down there. Not me. Really? Katie, they love it. They're down there conquering the undergrowth and the mosquitoes and an occasional tribe of unfriendly Indians, and they just can't wait to get back to it the next day. They're conquistadors without guns. Oh, I wouldn't put it that way. No? Write your husband a letter and ask him to come back, and then see what happens. Katie, I'm sorry. I I'm not yelling at you. You know that, but... Well, it's just that I'm tired of being the fifth wheel at a card party or the extra woman at a dance. You asked your husband to come back, and, and he refused? Every letter. Oh, he has the most marvelous excuses. Uh, he's doing something for mankind. The salary is too great. Be patient a little while longer. The truth of the matter is, he just doesn't want to come back. Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Katie? Yes? I'm leaving Carl. She wants me to write Rob and ask him to tell her husband that she's leaving him. Oh, why should you do something like that? Well, she just doesn't want to write a Dear John letter. Well, that's too bad, but Katie, that's not your problem. Well, she, she says that as long as Rob's his boss, that he might be the best one to tell him. And she thinks that verbalizing is so much better than, than something cold written on a piece of paper. Oh, banana oil. What? Oh. That's just something my mother used to say when she really wanted to say something much worse. <laughs> Katie, this just isn't your problem. I mean, it... You said you'd do it, didn't you? Well, I, I said I'd think about it. Oh, Katie. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, after all, the... Uh-oh. Death is up. You might have a perfect hand there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry Larry couldn't make it tonight, Katie, but I think you'll find Mother to be quite a bridge player. Well, to Rob. I'm not up to it tonight. Sure. Honey? Have fun. Thanks. Hey, Katie. Want to read the composition I wrote for school? What? Oh, oh. oh. Okay. That's very good, Dodie. Did you really read it? Well, of course. Why do you ask? Your aunt didn't go back and forth. She didn't. Well, maybe you're right. I'll read it later, okay? Okay. Uncle Charlie, I'm going to go take a walk. Don't go too far. It's dark out there. Okay. Come in. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetheart. Want to read the composition I wrote for school? Sure. Oh, you wrote this for school, huh? Yeah. Well, Slumber Party by Dodie Douglas. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were three little princesses. 
One was named Dodi, and one was named Prinkella. That's Priscilla. Oh. oh we'll uh, check on the spelling on that a little later. One was named Priscilla, and the other one was named Margaret. These three girls were real cool, and they minded their parents and all the good junk. I think uh, maybe you ought to substitute another phrase for all the good junk. Huh? Okay. All they wanted in the whole world was a slumber party. That's all Dodie wanted, and that's all Margaret wanted, and that's all Prin uh, Priscilla wanted. But the Queen said no, and that's that. I, uh, I guess you haven't had quotation marks, have you? Uh-uh. We're barely up to commas. <laughs> The queen, whose name was Barbara, and got a real rotten look on her face when she told the three kids they could not have a slumber party. And the queen, whose name was Barbara, said to the king, whose name was Stephen, this little princess will do anything to get that slumber party, even by writing a composition when she doesn't have to. Oh, she wrote this for school. Did you, Dodie? Uh-uh. But next time Mrs. Snyder asked for a composition, I was going to turn in this one. Maybe. But you didn't tell your daddy the truth, did you? I guess not. I'm sorry, Daddy. Oh, that's all right, buddy. But it's always a good idea to tell the truth about everything, huh? Yeah. Am I a crook? No. But I do think you're going to have to be punished, don't you? Yeah. Well, what do you think the punishment ought to be, Dolly? I get to pick it out? Well, what do you think, Mama? Well, I think it's a dangerous course of action, but, uh... All right. Pick your own punishment, don't you? Uh... I have to see the tramp? <laughs> no. I have to eat cookies until I get sick of them? That teach me lessons. <laughs> uh, I guess I better go to my room. Would it be so awful if we let her have a slumber party? Well, maybe I'll give in tomorrow. But I don't think she should be rewarded tonight, do you? Well, I don't know. The idea of having three princesses in the house is uh, rather intriguing. <laughs> Particularly uh, Princess Prinkella. <laughs> Prinkella? <laughs> well, I've had it with space for a while. Why don't we go down and have a cup of hot chocolate or something, huh? Hey, Steve, do you have to scrape that pipe? It uh, needs cleaning, Charlie. Yeah, well, it sounds like somebody's running fingernails over a blackboard. <laughs> hey, 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 she's here, look. Hey. Katie, honey, well, you're shivering. Why didn't you wear a sweater? <laughs> I didn't think about it, I guess. Yeah, well, it's dumb. It's dumb to go for a walk. Charlie, I Charlie, dumb... uh, I think we'd better leave. Leave? I think somebody better have a talk with that girl. Exactly. Hey, come on, Katie, sit down. Can I get you something? Hi, uh, I'm going to bed. Huh? Night. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, me too. Well, uh, good night, you guys. Good night, Charlie. That bad, huh, Kate? Does it have anything to do with that young woman who came by here a few days ago? I just don't know. Well, there are times to talk, and there are times when talking is exactly the wrong thing to do. Try to get some sleep, huh? 98. Have your credit card ready and call now. But there's more to it than that. I mean, uh, writing the letter isn't the whole thing. Everything she says about herself applies to me. The extra at the bridge game, the, the fifth wheel at the dance, the whole thing. You know, Katie, uh, life is, uh, life is a lot of things. One of them is, uh, what do you expect of marriage? What do you expect, Katie? Oh, Dad, you'll, you'll have to admit that having your husband far away in a jungle isn't exactly your average marriage situation. Well, I suppose you could look at it as uh, another form of being married to a doctor who's called out in the middle of the night or a... Uh, Salesman who's on the road traveling for weeks at a time, or a husband who works so hard during the day that he comes home and falls into bed at six o'clock. It's hot chocolate, Katie, and I want you to drink it. Now, you hear me? Thank you, Uncle Charlie. Mm. 
Are you saying that I should, I should just accept the situation? What's the alternative? Katie? I have thought of what you're thinking. Well, now we're in another area. Anything I say from now on will sound like I'm defending my son. Dad, I, I want you to defend him. Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me that I'm not going to turn out like her. What I'm saying, Kate, is that uh, you'd better drink your hot chocolate before Uncle Charlie comes back. I'm just saying that if you expect a uh, perpetual minute-to-minute -minute romance from a marriage, you're in trouble. Now, I knew a couple once who uh, had all the externals, but uh, nothing at the roots. Us? No, no, no. Just a couple I knew. He was always lighting her cigarettes for her and opening the car door for her. And sending her flowers a couple of times a week. <laughs> I'd settle for that right now. Yeah, of course you would, but uh, not if it was just an act, Kate. They did it just for show, for what other people might think. That marriage didn't last very long. I know what you're saying, Dad. Afraid if I say any more, I'll just be repeating myself. Katie, right now, nothing is more important to Dodie than a slumber party. She even did a little uh, fibbing to get it. Will she get it? Maybe. But it won't be what she expects. Like marriage? Like marriage. It isn't always what you expect, but uh, it's still good. Well, I'm going to bed. Good night, Kate. Good night, Dad. Thank you. You listen to him, Katie. He's right. You heard the whole thing? Sure. You know, life's a real bumpy road. What you gotta develop is good shock absorbers. And look, when I tell you to drink all your hot chocolate, now you drink it. I will, Uncle Charlie. I will. Good night. Good night. Some call him a prodigy. I give you Ernie Douglas. This offer won't last, so call 1-800-414-2882. Mother's minutes were half. Yeah, well, they look okay. Go on up to my room. Okay. See you later. He didn't even say our hats look good. <laughs> Neither did you, Dodie. Oh, well, yeah, they look okay. My mother was going to make me wear gloves. Only the dog ate one of them. <laughs> Dodie, didn't tell your friends were here. Oh, what wonderful looking hats. When does the slumbering begin, Mrs. Douglas? Well, I I'd say after dinner. All right. <laughs> Me? Well, cool. <laughs> Steve, I don't believe any one of those little girls knows what a slumber party is. You sure? Eight-year-olds are pretty smart these days. Well, they both showed up with hats. Margaret said she would have worn gloves, but the dog ate one of them. <laughs> You know, I, uh, I think our house is built on a tilt. The balls all go to the right. <laughs> really, Steve, I am a little worried about this slumber party. I mean, they got into their pajamas after dinner and got into bed, and I'm afraid they're just... <laughs> they're just lying there, waiting. Waiting for what? Well, that's just the point. Katie? Why? How long will it be? For what? For the slumber party to start. Well, it's already started. Honey, a, a slumber party just means that you, you go to someone's house and you put your pajamas on and talk for a while and then go to sleep. Man! <laughs> what did you expect? I, I don't know, but it sure wasn't talking and sleeping. <laughs> Man! <laughs> Yeah, 
You know, I still say this house is built on a tilt. <laughs> Barbara, look the other way or something. I'm going to kiss your husband. Oh, what? Well, because he was right about something. Dodie's slumber party isn't what she expected. But it's going to turn out all right. What does she expect? Well, I think the word party and slumber party is what threw them. Do you have any ice cream in the refrigerator? So, and some cookies. Good. Those poor little things waiting up there for something to happen. Oh! I almost forgot. Oh, thank you. I think you deserve two. Hey, this is better than golf. Refuse to pay double and a half or whatever for a plumber. Oh, dear. Well, let's wait till one of the boys come home and they can... Oh, Polly, what are you doing over here, honey? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm having a problem with Chip. I thought I'd talk to Dad about it. Oh. You're gonna have to talk awful loud. Why, Doody? He's in Chicago. <laughs> oh, I heard he was leaving. Well, it was a surprise to us, too. I mean, he, he had to represent the company at a conference and... I fed him at 6 o'clock, and Charlie whisked him to the airport. Want to talk over how horrible Chip is with us? <laughs> Why don't we go in the living room? This thing is going to drive me nuts. Come on, love. Hi, Katie. Hi, Polly. <laughs> well, you have looked more spick and span in your time. Mm -hmm. But I accomplished a first-class dripping under the sink. Before I go get cleaned up, Polly, tell me more about Chip. Well, do any of you remember a guy from Bryant Park named Brian Lipsker? I never was in Bryant Park, so I don't know him. I visited Bryant Park, but I didn't meet anybody by that name. Well, he showed up yesterday, and he's already got Chip's head messed up. Maybe you should call the police. <laughs> I don't think so, honey. Go on. Well, Chip is talking about giving up chemical engineering and getting into hard rock. Chip wants to quit his studies because of a guy named Brian Lipsker? Who is he? Well, his performing name is John Simpson. John, John Simpson? Who? John Simpson. I think I'm gonna crow. <laughs> He's a very big star. Well, I got steam on the plane, all right. And Barbara, oh, those stewardesses, they are beautiful. But you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> they were all looking at me. Well, you're still too cheap to call a plumber, huh? Well, just look at you. <laughs> hey, Uncle Charlie, John Simpson's hanging around with Chip. Where am I supposed to faint? <laughs> Man, you never heard of him either? Never. Man! You both probably walk right past the Rolling Stones or Creedence Clearwater. 
without falling down or anything. <laughs> John Simpson's real name is Brian Lipsker. Brian Lipsker? You mean that nice little character from Bryant Park? A nice little character from Bryant Park is a big rock star. He and Chip are over at our apartment right now reminiscing about Bryant Park. He's in town? Well, get him over here for dinner. His folks were always nice to Chip. John Simpson, coming over here for dinner. When? Well, we'll make it tomorrow night. I'll call him myself. Am I too young for fur coats? <laughs> Just looking at him, Charlie. Yeah, well, last time I saw that kid, he was on roller skates. <laughs> Don't you think it'd be cooler if he didn't gawk out the window? Ernie, if I look ugly, I'm going to kill myself. Do I look ugly? Uh, you look beautiful, Dodie. Yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> Brian, my boy. Hey, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Are you kidding, Uncle Charlie? You really made my favorite dish? Yeah. Don't you think I remember what you used to stuff your face with back in Brian Park? Now, are you ready? Huh? Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Chili dog! <laughs> oh, good Charlie, you have an incredible memory. You mean you eat food like regular people? Oh, sure, Dodie. Just because I sing rock and roll, that doesn't make me any different than anybody else. Man, I'll never wash my hair again in my whole life. <laughs> hey, Brian, uh, where'd you get that great-looking car? I picked it up in Switzerland from a guy I met. Turned out to be the prince of some Middle Eastern country or something. Mmm. Uncle Charlie, you sure haven't lost your chili dog touch. Well, um, naturally. Hey, when did you start hanging out with royalty, huh? All you do is play the guitar, right? Right, but in this business, you get to meet all kinds of people. Man, that really knocks me out. You start picking your guitar on your porch in Bryant Park, you turn it into a fantastic way of life. Well, it took a lot of picking. And a lot of luck. Well, I don't think it changed you, Annie. You still seem like the same old guy. But we heard you gave a command performance. Yeah, I was in England last year. And then I did a stadium in Japan in front of 100,000 people. And then I got a chance to go to Russia this year. I don't have anything to complain about. Well, you certainly lead an interesting life, but uh, wouldn't you say it's the life of a single man? Well, it was for a while, yeah. But then, since I got married, I take my wife with me everywhere I go. You mean I'm in love with a married man? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Dodie. She'd be here tonight, but uh, we're expecting our second child, so uh, she's kind of tired, you know. Isn't it difficult traveling around with, with the family? No, we have a nurse for the baby, and uh, I make sure my wife doesn't have anything too strenuous to do. Man, that kills me. What a way to live. Well, chemical engineering is a very fine profession, don't you think so, Brian? Call me John, Mrs. Douglas. I almost forgot who Brian was. And to answer your question, yeah, I, I do think chemical engineering is a good deal. Yeah, but why go through all that studying in chemical engineering and then graduate and park cars? You know, engineers go begging these days. But, Chip, it takes more than just desire to get into the music business. You have to have talent, too. <laughs> That's what they say, yeah. Uh, if you keep hammering away on that box long enough, maybe you can join my group. No kidding? Sure. Hey, Trip, uh, when you make it, remember you're gonna need a valet. You're hired, aren't you? I hope you're not making a mistake, Chip. Come on, let's, uh, check this thing out right. How much money do you make in a year? Yeah, uh, how worthwhile is it for Chip to go after music? Mm, under two million. Are you talking about dollars or trading stamps? <laughs> dollars. But, you know, with taxes and... Where are you going, Uncle Charlie? Out to buy me a guitar. <laughs> Three Sons, Saturday mornings at 8, here on Odyssey.
Yeah, hold it. Um, Phil, let me hear those tom-toms alone for just a minute and hit them real hard. Okay, uh, loosen those skins just a little bit. I think we got it. John, is it always this noisy? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I guess hard rock's just a noisy business. What are all those switches and junk for? Well, they're so we can take the basic sound from each instrument out there and kind of blend them all together until we get the sound we want. That looks like it can electrocute your brains loose. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you actually know what every one of these switches does? Oh, yeah, I have to, Mrs. Douglas. Uh, you know, producing records these days is a pretty complicated business, and you have to know how to use the whole studio as an instrument. That's amazing. Okay, Chris, let me hear a couple of licks on that piano. I want to see if I should roll some echo on. Why don't you guys plan something quiet, like holding your breath? Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea, Uncle Charlie. Now, what happens when they start turning blue? No, don't hold your breath. Ooh, don't do that. Oh, I wonder how they're doing at the session. Well, Dodie's doing fine, but, uh, you know, Barbara was raised on Glenn Miller, but she ought to be having a nervous breakdown about now. Like us. <laughs> that's right, Tasty. Fall all over yourself. Come on and get it if you want it. Go ahead. Wait a minute. You want that thing over there now? Yeah. Well, well, you can't have it. That's Uncle Charlie, see? I didn't want to fool you, but you can't have it. Okay, guys, hold it. That's okay. Take five. Take five is a uh, musician talk. Oh. I thought that sounded great. Well, it wasn't quite right. We'll retake it again. You're kidding. No, the piano player made at least three mistakes, and the bass player was just a hair late on his intro. What? Well, I... I have a very good ear for music. I... I didn't hear one mistake. He has to be pretty picky if he wants his records to be on the charts, Mom. <laughs> very well put, Dodie. I'll never wash my shoulder my whole life again. Barbara, have you heard Chip play the guitar? Well, he played for me over at the apartment the other day. Well, to me, he's always played just, uh, well, so-so. Uh, has he improved that much? I don't know, honey. I'm no judge. Well, you heard Brian play at the recording session, huh? Uh-huh. Does Chip measure up? Well, now that you mention it. No. Well, that's what I mean. What are you going to say to him? <laughs> I don't know. How do you tell your son he just isn't good enough? <laughs> Chip, I haven't heard you play in quite a while. You're playing very well. You uh, must have been doing a lot of practicing, huh? You know, I get more kicks out of playing that guitar than I ever did out of studying chemical engineering. But it doesn't lead anywhere, Chip. Chemical engineering gives you direction. Right, Dad? Well, Polly's right in a lot of ways, Chip. Uh, the field you've been pursuing has some solidity to it. While, uh, you know, I... Uh, I remember having this same conversation with my father. Yeah? What'd your dad say? You, well, you know, you've heard me play my old saxophone around the house, and, uh, well, you know I'm no saxophone virtuoso. Uh, but it was different in my day. I think uh, nowadays you have to be very good to make a living in music. Yeah, I, I know. But, uh, anyway, w what did your dad say? Uh, did you know I almost uh, quit high school to join a band? Really? I, I didn't know that. I almost went on the road with a band called... Uh, Harold Huggins and his honeybugs. <laughs> Harold Huggins and the honeybugs. Why, don't ever let me hear you knock any of the groups today. Why don't you go ahead and eat, Dad? I promised Barbara you'd be at work by 8 o'clock. Why didn't you become a musician, Dad? Not enough security in that field, right? No, that wasn't exactly it. Uh, I had the job. I, I was going to get paid $25 a week. $25 a week? Well, now, don't laugh. That's, uh, that was pretty good money in those days. But uh, two days before I was supposed to leave, uh, I broke my leg running the high hurdles. Wow. You could have been a musician except for one high hurdle. 
Well, let's say I could have been a honey bug. <laughs> Don't you see what your dad is saying, Chip? He says he could have been a honey bug, meaning there's no such thing anymore. No, he isn't. He's saying that I shouldn't give up the guitar. Right, Dad? My logic says uh, chemical engineering is stable. But uh, my memory tells me uh, being a musician is a lot of fun. But the difference between stability and fun is pretty obvious, Chip. Not to me. Anyway, you never got around to saying what your dad said. Well, uh, he advised me to become a musician. <sighs> You never did tell him he isn't good enough. I couldn't tell him he isn't good enough because he plays very well. Barbara, will you quit taking the tops off my pots? Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to see if the potatoes were coming to a boil. Mm -hmm. When the water spills over the side, it's come to a boil. Okay? Okay. Uh, well, where do we stand? Well, honey, the minute I heard him play, I had no argument. Besides, I really think this is Chip's problem. I'll say it's Chip's problem. Polly threw him out of the house today. What? I didn't hear about that. Oh, well, you were at the market, and Katie was upstairs chasing the triplets around, and I was here when Chip showed up. You mean uh, Chip is here now? Sure, he's upstairs practicing. Well, hi, honey. Hello, hi. Polly. Hi. Hi. I never thought I'd say anything so old-fashioned, but I'm so ashamed. For what? For being so selfish. In the long run, a wife should go along with what her husband wants to do. When I go old-fashioned, I don't mess around, do I? When you throw your husband out of the house, you don't mess around either. Charlie. I didn't really throw him out, Uncle Charlie. I just let it be known that I was tired of him practicing day and night. Dad? Would you talk to him? Well, Polly's right upstairs. Why don't you talk to him? Well, I'm not very good at face-to-face -face confrontations. I do feminine things, like I cry a lot. What do you want Steve to tell him? I can handle my end of the conversation, Charlie. What would you want me to say to him, Polly? Well, that I'm sorry. And that if he wants to be a musician, it's okay. And that I love him. Well, Steve can't handle that last one. It isn't whether I can handle it or not, Charlie. It's a matter of should I. Uh, Polly, what if we lived in Pittsburgh or someplace and you couldn't come to us? And... Honey, we don't live in Pittsburgh. Chip is your son, and this is rather important. Look, Steve, if you don't want to do it, I will. No, no, no. I'll, uh, I'll do it. As long as I'm not in Pittsburgh. You know something, Polly? There's gonna come a time when you have to be on your own. You know, me, Steve, and Barbara ain't gonna be around forever. I know. I'm learning. I really am. After all, I threw my husband out all by myself. <laughs> Well, maybe it's a difficult tune, Chip. No. No? Well, it's just that it takes me quite a while to learn a new tune. Oh. I thought you played very well this morning. <laughs> yeah, but that's the only tune I've got down perfect. I'm working on a bunch of others. That's why I'm practicing so much. You know, I'm getting blisters on my calluses. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chip, I uh, came in here to tell you that Polly's downstairs, and she said she's sorry she sent you away. Polly's here? As I said, she... She's sorry. Polly's a cool girl. You know, I'm really glad I married her. Well, I certainly hope so. Chip, uh, are you still seriously thinking of quitting school? Sort of. Do you really think you can make a career out of music? I mean, make a living for your family? Well, it'll take a lot of hard work, but I think I can do it. Well, let's say you're good enough to join Brian's group. Uh, They've been playing together quite a while, haven't they? All right. Well, that means you're going to have to learn an awful lot of tunes in a hurry, huh? 
Yeah, I, I guess. But Shepard, I know uh, it's true uh, kids go into music today and sometimes they hit it big. Of course, uh, sometimes they hit it uh, big on just one record and then you never hear them again, right? Must be a tough business. Well, yeah, I know, but... Well, maybe if I took a music course in school. Well, I'd say if you decide to make music your life's vocation, that'd be the way to do it. Of course, I'd be starting all over again, wouldn't I? Four years of music. That's against two years of chemical engineering. That's all you have left, right? Yeah. Where are you going, Trooper? To tell Polly I finally saw the light. Good. Thanks, Dad. Hi. Oh, hi, Ernie. Well, I see you called the plumber. Yeah, finally. Somebody stripped the threads on the trap or something. Oh. Well, I guess I did that. You stripped these threads, mister? Um, I think I hear the boys crying. Yeah, I, I was using a pipe wrench, and I guess I pulled too hard, and I felt the whole thing give. And... I was telling you, missus, I don't come down to where you work and mess around with your ailerons. So honest. Uh, uh, no offense, man. But you shouldn't mess around with my trap. The point is, now it's going to cost you, correct? Yes, I'm sure that's correct. <laughs> It's a funny thing, uh, just when you think you can solve all problems, someone comes along and puts you in your place. I think you'd be insufferable if you didn't strip a thread once in a while. I may be wrong, but uh, there's one item here that seems to be way off. Yeah. Well, as I say, I may be wrong, but... Okay. Okay, Bob. Steve, are those the Condell figures? Yeah. Uh, uh, here's the item I was talking about right there. Well, looks like I've done it again. Again? I'm supposed to be running this place. At least that's what it says on the door. And my mind's on another planet. Anything I can do to help? No, no, thanks, Steve, anyway. And thanks for finding that error. Saved me a lot of embarrassment. Steve. How old's your youngest boy? Ernie's 17. And I suppose he has the long hair and the disrespect and the disgusting clothes and the bare feet, too, right? Well, uh, no. No? Well, his hair might be a little longer than it was a couple of years ago, but uh, aside from that... Uh... Steve, what did you do right? <laughs> Tonight? Yeah, I uh, told Anderson I thought it'd be all right with you if they dropped by for coffee after dinner. Well, this has the sound of a command performance. No, not really. It's uh, more one set of parents dropping by to see if another set of parents has any answers. Two? A boy named Gordon. Gordon Anderson? You mean the model son who went to military academy? Who had those uh, lovely manners and knew how to speak to parents and how to ask the little girls for the next dance at the cotillion? That sounds a little like gloating, honey. Well... Not really. It's just that Sylvia kept rubbing it in. Glowing, exactly, but... Well, I certainly am surprised. Yeah, I am too. Well, what happened to the kid? 
Charlie, instead of listening at the door, why don't you just come in in the first place? Well, because some conversations don't turn out that interesting. Anyway, the Andersons should be here about eight. Huh? Yeah, I heard all that. That kid turned rancid on them. We'll find that all out when they get here, Charlie. Now, uh, you can do us a big favor. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Stay out of it. Charlie, it's just that the Andersons are probably very sensitive and self-conscious about this particular subject. You know, you two must think I got a big mouth or something. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stay out of it. But if the Andersons ask me a direct question, they're going to get an earful. <laughs> they will, too. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Sylvia. Come on in. Hi, Bob. Nice to see you. Nice Hello, Barbara. Hello, Come in. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Here, come and sit right down here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You know, why we ever go out to dinner, I'll never know. We have a perfectly good cook at home, and yet we insist on going out and paying those outrageous prices for... Oh, what's that word for it, Robert? I don't know what the word for your shrimp Louie was, but the word for my fettuccine was Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> oh. Oh, look, Robert. Barbara has cookies for us. Yes, well, we'll just put those out of your reach. And the nuts, too. Your shrimp Louie put you over the calorie count for the week. <laughs> Barbara, Steve knows why we came over, and I suppose he's told you. Last year, our son was a good kid. No genius, mind you, but he came home with his C's and B's. Then all of a sudden, he came unglued at the seams. His hair got shaggy. You know how you do. You say, Gordon, get a haircut, and he doesn't, and... Before you know it, your, your own flesh and blood looks like Rasputin. He actually has so much hair, he looks like he's wearing a helmet. <laughs> well, you, uh, you haven't mentioned anything except hair. No, it's the whole ball of wax, Barbara. He burns incense in his room, and he hasn't worn a pair of shoes for two months. And his blue jeans have patches on them. <laughs> well, uh, I think the patches are uh, sort of the in thing now, aren't they? Well, I'll tell you what isn't in right now, Steve. Disrespect. He hardly speaks to me at all, and he simply ignores his mother. And he's absolutely insolent to the servants. <laughs> Mom, I can't find my... Uh... Oh, sorry. Ernie, uh, you know Mr. and Mrs. Anderson? Oh, sure. Hi. Hi, Ernie. Hello. Oh, my room got straightened out yesterday, so I can't find anything. Mom, did you happen to notice where you put my barbell? Oh, yes, it was too heavy to lift, so uh, Charlie rolled it under your bed. <laughs> Thanks. I'm building up my deltoids. Good night. Good night, Ern. Building up his deltoids. Do you know how normal that sounds? Bob, uh, Sylvia, it, it could easily be that Barbara and I are the wrong ones to talk to about Gordon. Maybe. But if that's any example of what you're doing wrong, we'd like you to deal us in. How old is Gordon? Almost 16. He was always so sweet and loving and tender. The point is that within less than a year, we don't know him at all. And frankly, we wonder why it happened to us and didn't happen to you. Robert means if it happened to us and didn't happen to you, what did we do wrong? They know what I mean, Sylvia. <laughs> well? Well, Bob, that's really hard to answer. I mean, uh, except for the little bit you've told us, we don't know much about Gordon. I mean, uh, what about his friends? Well, when they're all together in the same room, they look like a herd of buffalo. <laughs> oh, that isn't quite fair. His friends are, when we're permitted to see them at all, strange. No matter what we say, they give us those little pitying smiles, like we were members of a different species. But there's more to it than that. Yes. We don't know what he does. We don't know if he's involved in... But we don't know anything. Have you talked to him? We try. We get the pitying smiles. We get the evasions. We get the flippant remarks. Hey, you want to know what I think? Uh, uh, Charlie. Uh, don't try to stop me, Steve. I got a solution. You want to hear it? Of course. Belt them. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Belt them right on the chops. Sylvia, he means that we should hit him. <laughs> right. Quit talking and start belting. Well, good night, folks. Well, uh, Sylvia, I wouldn't take uh, Charlie too seriously. 
You know, he's never laid a hand on one of the kids in his life. Too bad. For a minute there, I thought he had something. <laughs> You were saying that uh, he burns incense in his room. Thanks. But well, I don't think there's anything so wrong in that, do you? Well, no. Uh, a lot of kids are reaching back for the philosophies of the Near East and India. A and you said that the Andersons seem to be hung up on their boy's hair? Oh, we heard more word descriptions about that than anything else. I mean, you know, that he looked like he had a helmet on, that he looked like Rasputin and all the rest of it. I mean, they're really desperate people. But, well, why would they, they try to dump all their problems into your lap? Because they haven't got any place else to turn. I mean, I must say that when Ernie came thundering down those stairs and he sounded so normal that, well, it was like a breath of fresh air and they just looked so envious. And I suppose Uncle Charlie came in and told the Andersons to belt their son. Oh. That's right. <laughs> I, you're kidding. I, I, I was just joking. I got the solution. You want to hear it? Belt him! <laughs> Hi. Hey, did I tell Uncle Charlie I was going to eat in the cafeteria today? Well, I, uh, I guess you must have. Apparently he didn't make you lunch. <sighs> what was that for? Well, once in a while when a mother's cup runs over, she just wants to show it. Oh, cool. Um, well, does your cup run over enough to hit me with an extra dollar for lunch? Well, there's a girl named Suzette. You tell Suzette that the extra fudge whip Sunday is on me, okay? And my first is in the living room. Thanks, Mom. See you guys. Hi. Now, that's what I call a normal boy. He gets an extra dollar out of his mother when she's in a mellow mood. <laughs> Wait, every cent of it. Hello? Oh, hi, darling. Yes, well, Katie and I were just talking about last night. Tonight? Oh, Steve, I, I just don't think I can. I, uh, I know. All right. Yeah. Okay. Bye. I can tell by the look on your face that wasn't the best news you've ever heard. Well, apparently we are going to repeat last night's therapy. At their house. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, he's here. Dad? It's Mr. Anderson. He said he just had an idea or something. Uh, Ernie, I can't tell anymore by the way you dress. Uh, are you going out tonight? Yeah, with Suzette Musterbon. We're going to mess around down at the skating rink. Fine. Hello, Bob. Yeah, we're just about ready to leave. Oh, uh... Well, uh, I don't think so, Bob. Uh, he has a date, for one thing. Yeah, I understand, but... Uh... Well, I'll ask him, Bob, but uh, I can't guarantee that... No. Well, either way, we'll see you in a little while. All right. Goodbye. Bob uh, Anderson. Yeah, he uh, wants us to bring Ernie along. As an example of what a boy should be? I guess so. Oh, Steve, now you know that never works out. I know. But at least I can give Ernie a chance to turn it down. Uh. Say, Ernie, uh, Mr. Anderson's idea concerns you. Me? How come? Well, he has a son he's worried about. If I had kids, I'd worry about him, too. Well, it's more than that. The boy seems to be showing a lot of symptoms of, uh, well, you know. And Mr. Anderson wondered if you couldn't drop by with us. And uh, frankly, I don't know what he hopes to accomplish. Man, Dad, I have a date with Suzette. Yeah, I know. I just said I'd mention it to you. Uh, I'd like to help, but a woman scorned is a, uh, well, whatever they say. <laughs> well, she's waiting for me at the skating rink, so I can't even call her up. No, well, that's okay. I didn't promise him anything. Have a good time. Good night. Dad, uh, did you notice what you just did? No, what? You didn't haul me off to the Andersons. You asked me. Tell Mr. Anderson that's what he ought to try doing. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank you. I do talk to him, Steve. 
At least I try to talk to them. Have one of the cookies, Barbara. There are almost no calories, and they're 58% natural barley. They don't care anything about the silly cookies and the barley. <laughs> Sorry, dear. We don't usually yell at each other, but this thing is so... so frustrating. Where is Gordon now? Who knows? Whenever you ask him where he's going, he just says, out. We don't accept that at home. If you don't mind my saying so, Sylvia. No, of course not. Don't qualify what you have to say, Barbara. We're here to listen. Gordon, come here, please. I said, come here, please. This is Mrs. Douglas. This is Mr. Douglas. He's one of our top engineers at the plant. Hello, Gordon. Dear, Mr. Douglas said hello. Hi. Hi. Come sit with us for a minute, dear. No, thanks. There's nothing so urgent that you can't spend a minute or two with us, is there, Gordon? We, uh, we have a boy at home about your age, Gordon. Uh, I guess he's a year older. His name is Ernie. What grade are you in, Gordon? Tenth. Oh, good, dear. Have another cookie. They're mostly natural barley. Gordon, uh, do you like uh, baseball? He used to. Let the boy answer for himself, dear. Tell Mr. Douglas if you like baseball or not, Gordon. No. No what? No, I don't like baseball. <laughs> Gordon, go to your room, please. He knew I wanted him to say, no, sir. He was deliberately insolent. Bob, uh, tell me something honestly, will you? Sure, Steve. Are you always this unbending with a boy, or uh, did it start uh, as a result of the change in him? A little of both, I guess. It isn't easy for Robert to be that truthful about himself. I'm proud of you, dear. Steve, I honestly don't think we created the monster you just saw. I think he was influenced from outside. Although I admit I haven't always been exactly the jolly father image. He's not a monster, Bob. He, he's just wearing the badges that he sees around him, that's all. True. Yeah, I know that. But I don't know what else he does. Oh, I can put up with the hair and the bare feet and all that. But if he's on something dangerous, if he's... <laughs> don't say it, Robert. <laughs> we have to say it, Sylvia. We can't stick our heads in the sand any longer. Yes, we can. <laughs> Let's all have some coffee. <laughs> I think it's by the phone. Why? Maybe I'll go over there. You think you can help? Oh, maybe. You never know for sure when you're messing around with teenagers. <laughs> See you later. Bye. They can talk all they want about us being a disturbed generation. But we didn't act like the kids today, and we didn't look like the kids today. Steve, there's my high school annual. That's the graduating class. Pretty sharp-looking kids, aren't they? Short hair, spotless shirts. <laughs> oh, here you are. And I see you were wearing the old dirty cords. Dirty cords? Yeah, we all wore them. They were, uh, as you say, Barbara, one of our badges in those days. Of course, to be really in, they had to completely cover your shoes like the pops are there. <laughs> and you never washed them. Never? Never. We drew pictures on them, and we uh, wrote things all over them, so your mother wouldn't dare wash them. <laughs> right, Bob? Okay, Steve, you made your point. We were tough on our parents, just like the kids today, but the worst most of us ever did was drink a little near beer. I don't know what Gordon is doing. I wish there was some way that I could find out. Hi. Well, Ernie, uh, you got here. What happened with the skating? Yes, Suzette creamed her ankle, so I thought I'd come over. Oh. Oh, come on in, dear. Have a natural barley health cookie. Hey, Ernie, uh, Mr. Anderson seems to think that uh, if you were here, maybe you could uh, help solve the situation. Ernie, our boy's upstairs. 
I wondered if you could go up there and have a talk with him. About what? Well, he, he's just not communicating, Ernie. That's more than that. May I lay the cards on the table? Sure, sir. It's been a long time since anybody said sir around here. Ernie, we've lost contact with our boy. Probably our fault. But the fact remains, we don't know anything about him. Was he freaked out? Freaked out? Ernie, I'd say in appearance, he has uh, freaked out. His head looks like a bomb went off in it. <laughs> you know, he's wearing all the badges, the beads and the hair and the patch Levi's and... Well, what Mr. and Mrs. Anderson are really worried about is, is he on... Pot? Right. We don't know. Ernie, could you go upstairs and find out what you can? Oh, I don't think that would be too cool. I mean, some strange kid walks into your room and you just don't come on like an old buddy. If you could just talk to Gordon. Gordon? Gordon Anderson? Do you know him, Ernie? Oh, yeah, he's in the 10th grade at school. Well, I just didn't connect the name until now. Oh, you can relax, Mr. Anderson. I can? Yeah, he's okay. How do you mean okay, Ernie? Well, he, he likes the freaked out look, but it ends there. You sure? Well, yes, sir, I'm sure. Oh, Ernie, I'm so happy you came over tonight. You have no idea how, how relieved I am. How relieved we both are. Well, I guess that uh, sort of takes care of that, huh? Um, honey, don't you uh, think it's about time we were leaving? Yeah, it is getting Oh, to I wish well, you wouldn't go. Oh, wonderful that you came. We're going to have to. Just Ernie, great. Ernie, what about Joy's you? Good. Some homework? Oh, yeah, I got oh, a little bit. Thank, thank you. Ernie, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, Hi, Charlie. Oh, hi, Steve. Hey, uh, who's the sheepdog that Ernie's playing catch with out there? <laughs> That's uh, Gordon Anderson. <laughs> I've seen better looking mattresses. <laughs> How come he's bothering with that kid? Well, Ernie's trying to help Mr. Anderson change his son's image a little. He's doing it on his own. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ernie. It was getting late, so we had to quit. You know, that's one of the ugliest kids I've ever seen. And I've seen some Lulus in my time. He's just overexpressing himself. He's gonna get his hair cut a little so he can see to play catch, and I talked him into tennis shoes. I let something earn. Yeah, only tell Mr. Anderson not to expect any miracles, Dad. Gordon won't look much different. Listen, anything is an improvement. But tell me something, Alice. <laughs> what? Why should that kid listen to you? Because he's in the 10th grade and I'm a senior. <laughs> you know, it's a whole new planet. Bernie? Yeah, Dad? Thanks. <laughs> 